to Max. I'm bank on it with the mud. You don't like mud, do you? Not really, love. No. <laughs> Not really Not me. Not high heels. <laughs> no, with more than five million members, they're one of the world's oldest societies. It's the Freemasons. Well, their orig origins are mysterious, their ritual secret, and their influence is questioned. But now some members of the Brotherhood want to modernise, open up their doors, and refocus on Masonic spiritual teachings. Now, in a moment, we'll be talking to investigative journalist Martin Short and Freemason Martin Foltz. But first, Martin Foltz shows John Money the spiritual secrets of Freemasonry. Well, only the secrets that aren't really secret. How many Freemasons does it take to change a light bulb? Actually, I can't tell you. It's a secret. Say Freemasons, and I think of rolled-up trouser legs, dodgy handshakes, and mysterious rituals. I'm not a Mason, but the Grand Lodge in London is open to everyone. Now, this is the entrance to the, the Grand Temple at Freemasons Hall. Martin Fox has been a Freemason since he was 23. He believes the fraternity has had a bad press, and it's time to tip the balance in their favour. A lot of people have speculated about what happens inside a Masonic temple, so I'd like to explain to you exactly what we do. Thank you. Wow. In this grand temple, Freemasons take part in a very strange ceremonial ritual in order to be initiated into the Brotherhood. The preparation is, is rather complex. First of all, you're blindfolded. One of your shoes is taken off and you've got a slipper. You have your left breast exposed and you have a noose put round your neck. And yes, it's true, one of your trouser legs is rolled up. That's true? It is true. Why are these things done? They're all symbolic. So, for example, the trouser leg, it's to show that you weren't an escaped convict trying to join and so on. So by seeing if there's actually a manacle on your ankles. And what did you gain yourself from the ritual? It did move me quite dramatically. And because it makes you look at yourself and think, what kind of person am I? What are my vices? If you want to change your, your bad qualities to good qualities, you need to look at yourself. So, Freemasonry, they claim, is about virtue, but not, it seems, about revealing the whole truth. Are you allowed to show me the handshake? No. Just like, just like you wouldn't want to show me your pin number, if I break my word and show it to you, what's my word worth? Freemasonry of legend dates back to medieval Knights Templar. What we know for certain is that the first Grand Lodge was formed in England in 1717 as a trade association for stonemasons. Originally it was about you know, building physical buildings. Now it's about building yourself into the most honourable and virtuous person you can be. It's about self-improvement, really. But should we believe Freemasons are completely on the level? In the 80s, there were several investigations into the corrupting influence of Freemasonry within the police force. Today, all judges and police officers are obliged to declare membership. This is Toy Kenning and Spencer, where they've sold masonry regalia for over 300 years. They used to have shutters at the window so no one could see inside. The only other stores who do that are of a slightly more dubious nature down the road in Soho. This is where Freemasons get to dress up. The must-have buy is an apron. Can I come round here? Yes, of course. Thank you. So, this is the apron. Can I try one off? One of these aprons. You Would you mind? I, I just want to see what it's like to wear a Masonic apron. So really, you would put it round there and do it up, and that's how you wear it. Yep. And so what else goes with this? With this, you would need a pair of white gloves. May I? What's the significance of the white gloves? Some say it's because people's hands can't be seen, so you wouldn't know whether the guy next to you digs roads or he's a brain surgeon. You all look the same. Could be a mime artist. You could be a mime artist. <laughs> <laughs> or a snooker referee. It would tell. <laughs> it would tell. Also in store is the latest controversial Freemasons book by best-selling author Robert Lomas. You have the most wonderful claim to fame. Apparently, the character Robert Langdon in The Da Vinci Code is based on you. I, yes, it The same initials, a very similar CV. Uh, you both drive the same car, so yeah. I understand. Uh, yes, and it does wonders for my street cred with my undergraduates. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've been taught by Robert Langdon. I only wish I had anything like as an exciting a life as he does. So there's, you haven't uh, solved any murders? I have not solved a single murder ever, but I have written books on symbolism. You're the first person, I understand, to have revealed the rituals written it all down in the book, not only describing what happens, but also what it feels like. How come that's never happened before? I think people have been afraid of doing it, because in the past there's been a lot of, uh, of exposés done from people who weren't Freemasons trying to reveal that there is, a, there is a dark, hidden mystery, a deep evil at the middle of it. There isn't an evil. 
there's actually a force for good. So what's been the reaction from the more traditional Masonic fraternity? I've had a few grumpy responses from the more wrinkly brethren, but uh, I think if Freemasonry doesn't become more open, it will be the author of its own destruction and it will be its own fault. Some people see the Freemasons as being slightly sinister. Is that fair? I suppose we could be considered rather sinister. I mean, if you look at the sort of things that we wear and the sort of symbols that we wear, then perhaps we are a little bit odd. But uh, I don't think we're actually spooky. The rituals are obviously deeply personal. Is it a religion? It's not a religion. Providing